ابتدایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین گشت سرداراس بود به توی دروازه سرداراس بود گل به نام آسمون به برای ایران بزنه کریم ازداری فرد گول توی هر بازه کریم ازداری فرد در بازه پرتبال باز شد علی دایی صاحب توب توی هر بازه ازداری یه شبا حرکت از کچان نجات فرصت رو کچان نجات توی در بازه گول برای ایران Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gold Bazan. My name is Sina Sadzadeh. I'm joined by Arya and Daniel. I want to wish you all a very happy new year and I'm very happy to be back on Gold Bazan. Arya, Daniel, how are you both doing? I'm very glad to be back on the uh, uh, Gold Bazan podcast. Um, it's obviously been a little while now, but hopefully we can uh, make a good episode for you guys and your happy new year. And uh, yeah, uh, good to be back on. Happy New Year to, to everyone. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back. We want to do a quick episode just to basically give you guys some content around this. There's been a few you know things that have happened in the radar that we want to like update you guys on. And I guess we'll just jump straight in. So I guess the first bit of uh, the first topic I want to cover with you both is the Legionnaires. So we haven't had an episode dedicated to the Legionnaires for quite a while, but I think it's definitely worth noting you know actions that have happened in in the last sort of few months since we've focused on them obviously we've been talking about specific games in in previous episodes so i guess we can like start off by talking about areza jambash because i think he's the one that's really it's been a really pivotal change from him going to from england into the netherlands back to back to the netherlands of course Arya, what do you kind of make of the move and what do you kind of make of his performances in recent months Yeah, Jahan Bach, you know, I think he made a, a good move back to back to Netherlands. I think it was important for him to to make this move. I think he was struggling in, in England, um, no doubt about that. I think he was not in a good position uh, in, in his career. No, I think it, obviously it, it's not going to be the same like like it was when he was there before when he was younger. But it's still a good place for him to go to kind of revive himself and. We've seen with the national team matches that he's been involved in that he's been pivotal for us. Um, he scored important goals and he's got us in, in, into some important results. Uh, you know, with the national team. However, his club his club form has been a bit up and down. Um, and I think that he could definitely improve uh, that 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 part of his game. Whether it's a case of you know. You know, it, it, a lot of adjustments still need to be done. Uh, he still needs to adapt to the surroundings that he's now in. Uh, I don't know, but you know, obviously, the, the, he was involved in the, in the Conference League. He, um, I don't think he did too badly. You know, uh, not great, but not too bad. Um, he's not a regular starter for them of of late, but I still think he's a very important player for them and. I think the second half of the season is very important for him. Uh, let's see what happens. Obviously, he's a, he's a captain for the national team, so that's obviously something he should he needs to be focused on as well. But other than that, um, yeah, it's been a good a good transfer for him. Yeah, I I completely agree with you. And the thing is with with him is that I think he's a player that really thrives on confidence, and when he's playing well. He he, you know that confidence is so high that you know accelerates and sort of like that mode, that kind of momentum. You can really see it in his game, and um, so what's exciting is that once he's playing more for AZ Alkmaar, is that that those performances definitely go, you know, into the national team as well. He's definitely not, um, you know, what we've seen in previous games, previous kind of seasons when he's been that top player. But I think you know with more games, more game time, he can definitely get into that. Against that zone, because yeah, it's the consistency that we that we definitely miss from him. His ability is 100% there. Um, I think it's just the consistency that he's kind of missing. But um, Daniel, what do you kind of make of Medi Tarami moving to a, to a player that's shown a lot of consistency? Actually, playing for Porto, obviously played in the Champions League. That's a brilliant goal! Oh my goodness, what a fabulous goal by Medi Tarami for Porto. It's a sensational goal. Unbelievable. The most sensational overhead kick from Tarami. Um, what do you kind of make of his performance over the last few months? Well, in general, he, he did a 
bright year in 2021. He he was one of the best uh, uh, with goal contribution in the uh, top leagues in Europe. So like he's really really doing well. He had uh, actually a uh, uh, more than a month, almost two months of. Um, like, while not scoring uh, for for Porto, and uh, but he he scored again. He was actually doing well at the end, even if he wasn't scoring. So um, it's good. It's really really good that he's in a club like that, like fighting for for the first place, playing in the Champions League. It's uh, we're lucky. We're lucky to have him, and uh, I really hope other players will will follow in big clubs like that. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Like I know we talked about this off air, but Arya, do you think because obviously he was admitted from the national team squad uh, in the last sort of group of qualifiers, and and then obviously from following that, like his his performance on the pitch for Porto, obviously as Daniel just said, like he didn't score as many goals as he as he did before. Do you think that hurt his confidence? Like as a, as a big player as a national team, probably our top three, if not, you know, top two or even the first most important player in the squad, that must hurt someone's confidence. Yeah, no doubt. I think it did um, impact his, uh, um, you know, his confidence for sure. I think it was a case of a little bit of a shock for him as well. I think he didn't, I don't know if he necessarily expected to be dropped. Uh, Maybe he did, but I think it might have been a bit of a shock in the system. Uh, because obviously he's been called up to almost every single camp uh, for like, I don't know, five years. And yeah, you know, uh, it came at the uh, kind of a, an, int- an interesting time. Um, I'm, I don't think we really necessarily uh, missed him. Um, we definitely missed him against Lebanon, but against uh, Syria, we didn't. So ultimately it wasn't, you know, the terrible the decision that we, we maybe thought it would have been. In hindsight, obviously it would have been good to have, have had him in the squad but I think the decision that they made was correct in the end of the day. Um, having said that, Taremi's confidence, yeah, it was definitely affected. Daniel did mention that he did play well. I mean, he wasn't like playing badly, but he wasn't playing up to the standard where we expect of Taremi. Uh, and and obviously now he's back to back to his uh, you know good form again. He's scoring goals, and that could be because he's back in the squad. Uh, he's going to be called up for the next uh, camp um, a couple of weeks' time. So hopefully that continues because we don't really want a player like him having uh, you know this kind of lack um, low confidence uh, in, his, in his game. Yeah, I, I agree. And let's not forget that uh, he's a human being. Like he can have like like anyone ups and downs, and um, and I think he will be back at the top. And the most important thing is that he he will be a at uh, top for our players and uh, and for the World Cup if we qualify. Yeah, I mean, for sure, he's he's one of our top players. And I think Sosic definitely made, I mean, we talked about this in the previous pod, uh, he definitely made a big risk admitting him from the squad. If if we did lose that game against Lebanon, and it was looking like we were going to lose that game, he would have been under massive, massive scrutiny. But um, he made a risk. It played It played off well for him. And now he's kind of proven the point that doesn't matter how big you are for the national team, you can be omitted from the squad. And um, yeah, he's definitely proved the point, which is which is which is good. I guess that's what he wanted. Anyway, let's move on to Sadar Osman. Um, we will. I know you guys want are very like keen to hear about transfer rumors, and we will talk about that uh, later on in this episode. I I do promise you. But I guess talking about his current form uh, for Zenit, um, Arya, what do you kind of make of make of that? For for Osman, I think it's a. Uh... It's, a, it's, it's the same as before, you know, he's had a good season, he's scoring goals, uh, he, he's doing well in the Champions League, obviously he scored a goal against Chelsea uh, recently, and, you know, uh, for me, I, I think he's kind of conquered, if you will, the, the Russian League, in my opinion, I think he's kind of passed that level now, I hope... Um, we'll come on to it later, as you mentioned. I hope he does have a, a transfer in his near future because I think he needs it. I think it kind of it, it will help him. It will elevate his his level, and it will elevate his um, his teammates' level because when he plays good, his teammates play good. And I think Zenit maybe would love to keep him. Of course, they would, but I think he's past that now. So. Uh, no, up until now he's been good. He's had a pretty decent half season. I think Russia is going to be a. I think Russia is going going to have a little bit of a break now. I think because of the weather. 
I think they'll have a little bit of a longer break. I know to come back in like March or April, maybe. But uh, yeah, uh, Os- Osmond, uh, I'm always impressed by him. And uh, hopefully he can continue with the national team form. Yeah, I think Russia was an amazing place for him to develop his game. And I mean, he's learned a lot from the league. He's learned a lot from playing alongside Artem Zhuba, I think, as well. So I, I completely agree with you. I think he's outgrown that league. He is better than that. I mean, the, the counter argument, I mean, we will talk about this when it comes to transfer rumours. Actually, I'll, I'll probably leave it until yeah we talk about that. But um, yeah, we'll probably leave it on Osmond until we reach the transfer rumours because I think it will probably go in that direction naturally anyway. So I'll move on to Salman Gordus, who was on the podcast recently, actually, in case you haven't, in case you didn't notice. So if you haven't listened to that episode, please do listen to it. It's actually one of my favourites. I didn't host the episode, but it's one of my favourites that we've done. Um, so do listen to it. It's a very honest interview. But Daniel, what do you make of Salman Gordus uh, playing for Brentford? Obviously, he hasn't got the minutes that he would have wanted, that we would have wanted as well as supporters of him. Um, but when he has played, he hasn't played too badly. He scored a few goals from the substitutes bench as well. Like it's it's not been too bad for him. Yeah, he, actually, every time he's coming in, he's immediately doing an impact. Uh, and uh, he even changed the game once, uh, like w- winning a penalty, scoring, and everyone thinks he's doing well. It's quite frustra- frustrating to not see him start or giving him like giving more minutes. Or yeah, I, I think he 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 deserves to start. I I don't really understand why Thomas Frank is not playing him more because he's really doing well. Actually, with the national team, I think he can do more. He, we didn't see the best Hodos yet, uh, in my opinion. But with Brentford, every time he he has a few minutes, he's doing well, and um, it's it's frustrating. But yeah, he he should continue to work, and he will have his chance. I I hope, and, and we should like uh, point that he's not always playing at the same at the same position. Sometimes he's playing as a wing back. Sometimes in, in a more central role, so yeah, it's it's not easy. It seems that uh, Thomas Frank has his uh, starting eleven, but he has to gain his own spot because I think he deserves it. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's difficult because they're playing very well at the moment. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. No, I was just gonna say um, one of the people we interviewed for our Legionnaire episode in the summer, um, David Anderson, who is from Brentford FC Tactical. He put out a very good video uh, analyzing Kodus and how he can actually improve the Brentford midfield because currently they play, I believe it's Norgard, uh, Onyeka, and maybe Jensen. Sometimes they play Janelt. So, um, <clears throat> but he said that maybe Kodus can offer something a little, a little, a little bit different, a little bit more of an advanced uh, playmaker who can actually impact the, you know the, the forward line a little bit. So, yeah, I think he, he can be interesting. I just think maybe his style, maybe his style, it's a little bit hard to um, adjust that style to the Premier League uh, within a within a year or a year and a half. Give him some time, it could happen. I don't think he's, I don't think he's quite in the same boat as Jahan Barra because I think, I think he's been a little bit more successful just now in his career so far, more than Jahan Barra. But I don't want him to be, you know, thinking that he has to stay with Brentford in the Premier League for the rest of his career because I would like him to go to go somewhere. Maybe he gets more game time and he comes back to Brentford, you know. Um, but, you know, I think he, he's got so much ability. It's just consistency for him, you know. Here's the thing from watching someone play in the Premier League compared to, I know you compared it with uh, Jahomash when he was in Brighton. And the thing is with someone is that when he does play, he plays very, very well. As Daniel said, like he scored a few goals, got a lot, a few assists, won like penalties. And he does play, he, he has a very good part of the squad. Whereas when uh, Jahomash played for Brighton, even when he did come as a substitute, he didn't really get a hold of the game. And that's where I really see a difference between someone and, and Ayreza is that someone definitely has the ability to play in the Premier League. I just think Thomas Frank, he's doing so well with Brentford at the moment, and he's got that starting eleven cemented in his mind. I think his role, someone's role, is very much the substitutes, which is um, because he does come on pretty much every game. 
whether that's you know for, for good or for bad. So I think he's definitely impressing and he's definitely part of his game plan. He's just not where he wants to be. But the thing is, he talks about adaption. Um, is that a word? I think so. But to, adapting to the league, like he's still, like I think we, we view him as younger than he actually is. He's like 28 years old now. I don't think, I think he needs to get into that stride very soon because like he's, you know, this should be his prime, you know, like he should be into this, into this stride fairly soon. So the thing is, I don't think we've seen the, the best that he, that he can offer, but he doesn't have that many years left to show it off. Um, so that's my only kind of worry with someone. I don't know if you have any like takes on that. Yeah. And, and, and actually there is two facts I, I would like to point out is that like, if you compare him to Jahan Barsh, like, as you said, he's doing better. And let's not forget that Jahan Barsh in the first year at uh, Brighton, he, he had a, a lot of um, chances, a lot of starts. Rodos hasn't. So he's doing even better without starting. So it's really positive. And, but yeah, as Arya pointed, we, we should wait and see at the end of the season because if he hasn't uh, much game time, maybe at, at this age, he should move. Well, but we'll see at the end. Let's not. Let's not talk about that now, like to to choose if he has to stay or not. But he's 28, so it's a question we have to ask. If, if I was him, I'd go. If I was him, I'd go at the end of the season if he doesn't get enough game time. I think maybe even a loan back to the championship, maybe. I think it could be good for him. Because yeah, he didn't really play much in the championship last season either. He wasn't a regular starter even then. But I think he could have done, if he did play, I think he could have done really well. So maybe, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, and the other thing I, I didn't get is that um, the team was struggling for a few games uh, during December, and he didn't try and change something with putting starting someone. So maybe it was it was a nice time because when the, the team is struggling, the coach always tried to change and try and new thing. But Thomas Frank didn't start him, so. But now the team is playing well again, so <laughs> we'll see how, how how it will go. Yeah, I think, yeah, we could definitely do a breakdown on like Thomas Frank and like Brentford and someone as a whole. But I think, yeah, let's move on to Abed Zadeh, um, who's definitely impressed us, I think. So I think, yeah, we'll just talk a bit about him as well. Um, Arya, what do, you, what do you think of Abed Zadeh? I suppose we could speak about Abed Zadeh and Beraman together, um, you know, because obviously those are the two who are competing for the national team spot. Abed Zadeh specifically has done really well. Um, you know, I think a lot of people doubted doubted him, you know, moving to the the, the second tier of, of Spanish football. Uh, personally, I thought it was a, a very clever move. Uh, I said it in the summer, I thought it was a clever move at the time. And I still believe it is. I think it's actually, I'm, I'm actually more impressed by it as, it as it keeps playing for them because Ponferradina are, are a club that are, are, you know, they're a good club. You know, they may, they may not be very well-known club, but they're good and they've done really well. And maybe, yes, uh, you know, they won't be a direct promotion to the La Liga, but they'll be in the conversation for it for sure. Um, and if he gets promoted in the summer, I don't see why, uh, you know, another La Liga team won't come and sign him, you know. So let's see what happens. I think he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, Bayern Van, a little bit of a struggle for him recently. Uh, same with Niels Mann. Niels Mann not really had much game time. He's only played cup matches. But Bayern Van, he's, you know, he's played, but I think he's struggling for, for the game time that he's looking for. Um. You know, I, I was really happy to see him, you know, winning those Guinness Book of Record awards that he got for the, you know, the long throws and, and whatnot. But I really just want to see him focusing on his game, uh, focusing on playing because he's, he's a fantastic goalkeeper as well. Um, but we'll see, you know, I think Bernard Van just needs to find himself again uh, because he's not in the right, I don't think the right situation. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Arya. I think... Uh... Bayervan should should focus and like he he lacks consistency nowadays, uh, but Albert Zade is not. So <laughs> it will like we're always uh, th there is the the debate on that. Maybe one day Amir will will be the number one if if things continue like that. If uh, Pompey Rina 
promotes because they aim promotion then uh, it, it would have been a very smart move uh, by uh, Amir and he even if he doesn't move at the end of the season if they get promoted he will play in La Liga so even for one one more season it's it's an amazing thing I, th- I still think he'll get offers from, from La, La Liga even if he doesn't get promoted I think he will I think uh, he's he's done that well yeah 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 actually that's true that's true and we'll see about Bayron one, but yeah, he needs to be more consistent. Like he, that's the the most important thing. When you you look at the great players, they're great because they can do very good matches. But on a long period, it's not just one game and ten games you don't play well. No, it's every game that counts. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with I agree with both of you. And then the last uh, legionnaire I want to talk about before we move on is uh Goli Zadeh who um obviously always plays well to the national team I, I I'm always impressed with him um so I think yeah last one we'll talk about before moving on Daniel well he scored the uh, uh, nice goals in Belgium league I think he's a very good player he's a clever player and um, at the end of the season as he said maybe it will be the time for for a bigger move so but he's doing well this year he's doing well for the club for Team Melly and that's what we need from our our players. Yeah, I mean, he did start a little bit poorly at, at the start of the season, Kodiza, for sure. I think he, he didn't have the best of starts and he wasn't particularly at the, the standard maybe he should have been for the national team. Um, I don't know. I don't know the reasons for that is, but ever since we interviewed him, <laughs> he's been great. <laughs> so maybe we should get more interviews for more of these national team players. Um, you know, he's been he's been good recently. He scored a couple of absolute screamers uh, for Charleroi. Uh, you know, the Belgian league. I think people are really impressed by him over there. Um, I do think he will move in the summer. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think he obviously extended his contract. I think I believe it was for financial, you know, benefit of the club to do that, but I don't think it was to keep him long term. Um, I think he'll leave, and I think I think he deserves to leave. I think he deserves a, a, a good league to play in, and uh, yeah, uh, always impressed by him. All right, so before we move on to the transfer rumors, so I know you guys are very excited about that. Uh, let's just cover this one very quickly because there's been some stuff over Twitter and the news and stuff about about Canani. Um, obviously, before we go into this, I have to say that we're not accusing anyone of, any, of anything, but these are things that kind of came up over Twitter, um, and we want to address it now uh, in case it did actually happen. I think that's a very good way to say it. Anyway, Ari, I'll let you cover it because um, I don't want to go too much into it. I think you you definitely know more about it than I do. Um, reluctantly, but yes, uh, I do. I think it was a, a situation that was... Well, I mean, for me, it was a bit unexpected. I didn't really think it would have would have popped up that way. You know, um, voice recordings of Canoni were leaked on, on social media, on Instagram, um, of him speaking to a, 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 a female uh, during the the national team camp. Uh, I think it was in uh, September, if I'm not mistaken. It was the, the, the last Iraq game that we played against Iraq. It was played in Doha. Uh, in Qatar, and it was, it was it was allegedly allegedly it's during that camp that this occurred in, uh, because in that voice recording they speak about being in Qatar, uh, and the, you know he he's um I don't really want to say what what he says, but it's just regarding the national team, um he him being in the national team camp uh, and a, a female uh, a woman who who he's speaking to um. And it's you know I don't I don't really want to go into details, but you know we don't know if it's real. We don't know if it's um, what is actually if it's actually him. You know, people may it might it does sound like him for sure, but we don't know. Um, we we definitely hope not. And I know that on if it's to come from any official news on it, he has been called up to the national team. He hasn't been suspended or banned from the national team. So that's obviously a positive, I believe, because I do I do think that he is a important player for the team. I think he's done really well, Kanani, in these uh, in in these qualification matches. I think he's been really consistent. There's, there is criticism for him. Um, I disagree. I think he's been good. I do think he's been good. 
And I just hope that we can put all this noise and, uh, you know, in Farsi, we call it Hoshie, just behind us for once, for a qualification to go to go comfortably. If we can do that, if we can get our national team in the correct position, we could be a very difficult team to, to, to compete against in the World Cup at the end of this year. Uh, you know, we're only about 11 months away, 10 months away from the World Cup. We need to get our team in the right, in the right state of mind. We can't have these uh, external issues going on, constantly controversies being caused by things that are so out left field, you know, um, that, that's really all I've got to say about it. Yeah, I, I will add to that where, you know, similar things have happened in the past from other national teams, uh, no, notably like Phil Foden, Mason Greenwood for the England nas- national team, and obviously other ones across the world that I probably don't know about. But they were they were dropped. Canoni hasn't been dropped. But the thing that I want to, re- I think, highlight is that Skosic doesn't have a problem with dropping key players. Like, who can say that Canoni is more important than Mehdi Tarami, right? Like it's, it, Mehdi Tarami is, is far more, I know the different positions, but Mehdi Tarami is definitely more important than Kanani is. Yes, we would have missed Kanani if he got dropped, but Skosic doesn't have a problem with dropping key players uh, for, for important games. So I, I'm actually trusting his decision on this one because if there was, you know, something broken or whatever, like he would have probably dropped him. It's not because he's an important player or whatever, like he he's probably got the same scrutiny as everyone else. So... That's kind of what I wanted to highlight there. Um, I mean, I'm going off the impression the that player. it's. I'm going off the impression that it's not real, because I don't really want it to be real. But if let's just put it in that kind of bracket that it was real, if potentially if it was real, I think it would be very disrespectful to the national team, to his teammates, to to the staff, to the people who run the national team, to the federation, to the country. I think it would be a very disrespectful thing to do. However. Like I said, we cannot accuse anyone until it's proven that 100% that it was him and that it's real. So I, I really can't, I can't, I mean, I, I'd love to, to give my opinion fully, but I, I choose not to because I don't feel like it's it's right just now to do that. Uh, and if he's not being dropped from the national team, that indicates to me that it's been dealt with behind the scenes, you know? I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, it was a bit awkward. Uh, it was an awkward situation. And um, I'm happy that he, he, it's it's a st- closed subject now. Uh, as you said, I think they, they just solve it between themselves, between the national team. And, uh, and we know that our coach can't drop a player if he if he sees fit so i think he took the wrong the right decision because like with the elements he had uh, and we don't have any elements on the on this subject so i'm happy that we don't lose canoni because as aria said he did very well i think he was our best center back so if he didn't disrespect our staff and players and and everyone so so it's fine and just we should just move on very nicely handled gentlemen i think we handled that very nicely okay let's move on to transfer rumors this is the part of the show that i think people are definitely looking forward to um because obviously transfers are very very exciting there's a lot of transfer rumors flying about um especially about a few few players and i think we'll start off with probably the most exciting one that's most likely to happen is osmond transferring away from zenit st petersburg there's loads of rumors flying about and they've been, they've been flying about ever since he he transferred to Zenit in the first place, to be honest, like I don't want to list every single club because we'll be here for ages, but I know what seems like, I guess, give us a bit of an update. What's been going on. What's kind of the most likely transfer that's going to happen. Well, recently Di Marzio, uh, Genico Di Marzio from uh, Sky Italia, you know, he was reporting last night, um, as of recording today, uh, this I think it's the fir- uh, first eleventh uh, of January. Uh, he reported last night on the tenth. Basically, there's an inquiry made by Juventus to Zenit Saint Petersburg for um, 
Osmond because they have uh, lost uh, Federico Chiesa uh, to an ACL injury. Um, obviously, Chiesa is a winger. Uh, however, from the report, uh, is that and they don't really want to bring a, a new winger in because I think they obviously have like Kulosevsky, uh, you know, they have um, they, play, they play like McKenny out wide as well, so they don't really need a winger uh, in their opinion. So they maybe want to bring a, a new striker in to maybe partner Morata up front. Uh, so maybe that's the, the the thinking behind it. Now, whether Juventus could get him in January, I don't really know. If that's the case. I I I believe, I believe. Um, I don't have any 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 sources on this, but I believe that he wants to stay until the summer, and then he can, as a free agent, you know, make a much more, much easier move, I suppose, for him to a team that you know that comes in. Uh, for free and, and and he's able to go on a Bosman deal. Now, Leon, of course, has been that team who have kind of been after him for a long time. Uh, I believe they want to sign him on a, on a free transfer. Um, they have offered money, I'm sure, but I don't really think Zenit need money. They're a very rich club. So I don't really think they care about lo- losing him for free, you know, because they have so much money a few million is not a big deal for them. So if he goes on a free, I think it's, it's a win-win for both, I think for Zenit, for himself, and for the club that signs him. Uh, I don't know what, what, what why he would want to leave just now. I think uh, I just don't see it happening either. Yeah, I mean, January is always an awkward time to come in, um, but he should definitely move. I think, like, yeah, he's, he's made the decision to leave as well. Like, he hasn't signed any contract or whatever with Zenit. So... Definitely leaving, um, Daniel. Where would you where would you prefer to see him? Well, actually, um, actually, we'll see this summer. I I think he will stay till the summer too. Um, he it's we're sure that Lyon is interested in in him. It's actually Lyon is not a bad move. Many will say, yeah, Lyon is not in Champions League or will not be in the Champions League at the end of the year. But uh, we should we should all. Uh, know that uh, when you're playing in Lyon or and um, scoring more than 15 goals in a season, all the big clubs will look look at your profile. So Lyon is a play. It could be um, a step forward and uh, a transition club, like to go to one of the best clubs in the world, because they sell players to to the best. So I think Lyon won't be a bad move, and Ligue One would would be an easy place for him to to score a lot of goals and attract a bigger interest but actually it will be, it's maybe clever from him to wait uh, till the summer and to go to uh, a better club as a free agent he he will go definitely to 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 a good place because um yeah he will have more opportunities and uh, we don't have that much free good strikers uh, on the market too. So I think there will be new suitors for him and uh, let's just wait and see. Daniel, what do you think yeah, about for sure. what do you think about the, the Liga for, for, for Sardar? Do you think, obviously, you're from France so you, you know more about it. Do you know do you think that a player like him would make a, a positive impact right away? Or do you think it would be kind of difficult at, at the beginning? Because it was obviously hard for someone. It wasn't always easy for him, you know? Yeah, sure. But if Sardar come to, comes to to Liga, it will be in a good club. Like, for example, Lyon drew against PSG and he will be alongside very nice players like uh, Paqueta, uh, Usem Awar. Um, he will he will be with uh, Boateng, <laughs> the one he drew all very nicely a few years ago. Yeah. And um, and as I said, like League One would be a a better league than Russian, the Russian league, and uh, it will be a step forward. And uh, I think he will he will score easily there. He he will do much better than someone. Someone was at Amia, and someone isn't playing in the same position. He was in a not in a good club, so it's always more difficult than a club that is playing in the top positions. So it would be a nice move, but 
maybe he can have even more this summer. Yeah, what's also interesting is that Leon play majority, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, Daniel, they, I've, from what I've seen, they play majority as like a lone striker up front. So, like, it'll be interesting to see, like, because he's, he's played he's played that before, like, he's played that for both Zenit and the national team. But um, I always kind of prefer him to have support um, to some degree. So, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see, like, either way. But I think, I think Leon could be a very positive place for him to go to. Yeah, actually, it would. But let's see, because with Esmond, <laughs> with this summer, we thought he, he went to yeah. Bayer Leverkusen and he didn't. Yeah. So. I and... would have loved that. I would have loved, loved him to go to Leverkusen. I think, it, I think the Bundesliga is where I want to see him. I think even La Liga, may, I mean, I know Sevilla are, are still kind of maybe interested in him. I don't know. It's, for me, Osmond, he just needs to go to a better league. Like yeah. uh, the Russian league, and he will do well. The Russian league is great, you know. It's a it's not a bad league. It's it's quite good, but he's way past it. He's way past it. It's just not even close anymore, you know. So he has to go. Yeah, and he has the level to to establish himself in a better league. So we we're behind him and we trust him to do the right decision. And maybe this summer clubs like uh, Milan, AC Milan were. Uh, we we had I'd previous <laughs> rumors, but uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, it, it can be it can it, be become real this summer. Yeah, it could. I mean, and even with Juventus, uh, <laughs> there were rumors about Morata leaving to to Barcelona. So yeah, we, there aren't that much good strikers. The only negative things, the only negative thing, sorry, about Esmin is that he's uh, for he he ta- he's taking a non-European spot. That's the only thing. Other, otherwise, he's a very good player, very talented, and I, I think believe, many doors will open for him. I believe Juventus have their non-EU spot free, so I think that's why that could be a potential place for him to go. But yeah, we'll see. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, but it also just quickly, it also makes that player more. It also makes them cheaper, right? If they if they're non-EU, like that's what that's why uh... these Portuguese leagues love. No. Well, I, they, I they swear, have to I pay. They, they have to pay a certain like a waiver for for a non EU player to play in in a, in a EU team. As in, uh, like the market value for maybe non-EU players, maybe yeah, That's market I mean. value wise potentially. So they but, get more like value. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on to the next transfer rumor. I was going to move on to Goli Zade. Is there another uh, transfer rumor for another player that we should cover first? No, I don't really know if there's much for Goli Zade. To be honest with you, I, I think Goli Zade just now, as I said. I think he he's going to leave in the summer but I think in terms of like linked clubs I haven't really seen his name out in out in the kind of mercato as, as much I think maybe maybe it comes to like I would say like May time you'll see his name linked with some maybe clubs I think if you could potentially even stay in Belgium maybe go to a better a team in like maybe even like a club Bruges but I'd love to see him in Spain or Portugal. I'd love to see him in Spain or Portugal. I just think at this stage in his career, that would be the perfect move for him. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I haven't seen any transfer moves, but one that I have seen some is is Syed Manesh. Um, what's the latest on him? Syed Manesh, um, of course, he's gone back to Fenerbahce. Of course, his, his, his one and a half year loan with uh, Zoya Luansk ended. Uh, in January, now he's back with Fenerbahce. Uh, he has offers from Hull City uh, in the Championship. I think they're currently 19th in the Championship. Uh, Anderlecht. Um, he was quoted saying something like he would love to go to Anderlecht to work with Vincent Company. I don't know where that came from. That's what I've just what I've read. Um, and also uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, of course, back in Ukraine. Or uh, they've been interested in him for a little while, though. Uh, so that could be an interesting move. I think Anderlecht are a decent club. Um, maybe a club that maybe even Goyes they could go to. But I think, uh, yeah, Shad Shad Manish, uh, he's a great talent. He's only twenty years old. I mean, you know, he's got such a long career ahead of him. You know, he's been around for a long time as well. So. Even a club like Anderlecht, Hull City, I would be very shocked if he accepts that offer. Uh, I don't want him to go to Hull City. Like, he, I just don't see why he would why he would go there. They're not going to get in a Premier League ever again. Hull City. I mean, they're they're really low in the Championship. 
And I mean, I was when I when I watched Tafazoli play for them when he was there, they didn't seem like a great team. You know, they didn't seem like a good team at all. So, although Championship's not a bad league, I, I would like to see him in a better, you know, better team than than Hull City. Yeah, like uh, what those went to Brentford. Actually, Championship yeah, yeah. is a very risky move um, if you go to a, a struggling club because. It's not an easy league. It, it, maybe it's the second year league in uh, oh. uh, the second league in England, but it's not at all an easy league. They they have mo- a lot of budget, more budget than League One, for example, in France, and um, there pl- there is a good level. So if he goes to Belgium, it could be a nice transition because he he will have the level to to improve, and it it, it would be a right step. He's very talented, so I really hope he'll go in a, in a good place because he deserves it. I mean, Shakhtar yeah. would, would be nice for him. I think the Ukrainian league is also a good league. I think he could he could stay there. Um, and obviously Shakhtar are a very successful club. So, yeah, he has so I think he'll have a lot of offers come come end of January. I, I, do, yeah, I, and- I do think he'll move this this month, though. Right, and he, he could do like Osman did in Russia, but uh, in a in a more fast and quicker way. Like if he goes to Shakhtar now, it it would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, bottom line is I'm very excited to see where he ends up. I mean, even if he gets this move wrong, if he moves to a high risk club and it doesn't really pay off, I think he's got the time. He's definitely got the talent to bounce back because um, he is he is so young. Anyway, let's move on to Gaidi. Uh, I know there's also some transfers from his side, some false, some maybe not false. Um, Arya, what, what is the kind of latest on him? Well, Qayadi has been linked to Celtic, uh, one of my local teams. I don't support Celtic, by the way, I'm just uh, saying. But, um, you know, I I was told that the, the rumours are not true. Um, I was told that they don't know where where it kind of originated from. Maybe I'm being fibbed to. <laughs> Maybe I'm being lied to. Maybe I'm not trying to put any words in anyone's mouth. Maybe there are offers for him behind the scenes from Celtic that are, you know, just interest. Uh, I just don't think that Celtic has enough money to sign him. Like he's making a lot of money out there in the UAE. Celtic will need to offer him a big contract for to for him, first of all to come to Glasgow. You know, and then to leave Dubai for Glasgow, uh, you know, Shabab Al Ahly or or I think are they in Dubai? I don't know, but they're in the UAE. I don't see why you would come all the way to Glasgow just for 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 the SPFL. You know, it's not a great league. It's not a yeah, you know, it's not a good league. SPFL. I don't watch it, and I live here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it would be a wrong decision, and I don't really think Celtic need an, another winger or a, or attacking midfielder. From what I've been told, they're already going to sign. I think it's Jota from the Portuguese league. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if they need him. Um, I would be surprised if he moves uh, this month anyway. So, so yeah. Yeah, I really don't see that move happening at all. Like, I, I doubt that they'd spend that much money to take a risk on a player who's playing the UAE. That doesn't make sense to me from their point of yeah, view either. Potentially, potentially, even you know the non-EU thing is a little bit different in, in, in you know, in, uh, in, the, in the UK, of course. But I don't know. Like, I just don't see how he would come over here for the money he's making out in the UAE to come to Scotland. For for just to play in a European, I just don't see why you would do that because he would have just left um, Estegalal to uh, to Scotland rather than going to UAE if he was if he was interested in in that game time aspect because he's going for the money of course to UAE no doubt about it you know yeah, yeah it doesn't make sense from either side me too it's only been a few months he recently moved from Estegalal so I I don't see him moving again that quickly. Maybe next summer or maybe the year after, but not this winter. Are there any other rumors about him or is, is it just the Celtic one? Um, I haven't heard anything else. I think it's just Celtic. Um, yeah, me. I mean, it makes sense. He only just moved. Um, so I mean, there was this thing because, I mean, the rumors, just like very quickly, the rumors started because there's a video of him training in Celtic gear. 
but this video is from like 2016 it's like an old video on his instagram from 2016 him training in like celtic gear it's like it's just a training video like chill out and also apparently he followed um i think actually you know he did follow a celtic player that, that just signed for that club i don't know what that's got anything to do with him potentially signing for them it, you know it might it might be an indication but i don't really think that means anything in my opinion uh that's just my opinion um but you know we'll see we'll see okay cool let's move on are there any other transfer rumors that we haven't covered that we should cover is there anything that you guys have seen um no i think uh i think pretty much that's it the only thing i'd like to see is is like it's a few more uh players from the persian Gulf pro league coming over to uh, to europe such as maybe yasin salmani i'd like to see him get his move maybe in the summer potentially i know he's injured right now um no afghan has have, had having a fantastic season for sepahan i'd like to see him uh, come to Europe again. I know he had a difficult time at Charleroi, but I think now he's he's a bit more matured. He's found himself at left back. I think he could do well in, in Europe. Uh, and other than that, I don't know, Daniel. What do you think? Well, I think that's all for on the rumors. We can move on into the next next subject. Okay, fantastic. So there was also some news uh, around Paris Police, Esterlal, and Golgahar, who have been eliminated from the ACL. Um, I don't know any like much about this at all. So, Arya, like for those who don't know, like myself, uh, what's what was what what's going on there? Well, they've been eliminated from the A- Asian Champions League. Um, they were eliminated uh, because of. Uh, the, a, a lack of documentation, you know, for, for the competition, you have to be registered. Uh, I don't know exactly what the wording is, but basically th- there was the correct documentation um, done by the clubs in order to get in. Now, some people are saying that it was just Paris Police, but because of the, the controversy that would have caused, they also uh, removed SL. Oh, that's just what I've heard. It might be totally wrong. Uh, Gold go higher or the same. Uh, yeah, look, I've said this uh, in the past. I've had a lot of criticism towards SL Press Police. <clears throat> Both clubs are, are, in my opinion, struggling for uh, having a you know, having a club like SL Press Police that have such massive fan bases, have over, I don't know, 40 million fans. You just you just need to do better. Like I expect so much better from these clubs that it's ridiculous. Like for example, you know, I put a tweet out the other day, you know, saying that I don't believe both these clubs are even clubs. They're just teams. They're they're just two first teams playing in a league in Iran, and that's it. It's not an actual football club. You know, they don't have their own stadium. You know, Azadi isn't owned by them. They don't have, um, you know, their uh, a, a team shop. You know, they don't really have anything, a training facility that's real for them. And I understand that this is always the excuse that these uh, these clubs bring were, were state-owned. I completely understand they are state-owned clubs and I'm not dismissing that. But you have a responsibility to provide your fans with the correct support. And because they support your club so heavily, you have to then in in return give them the support that they deserve. Where is the academy that they all speak about? Where is that? Where is the women's team for Estelle World Press Police? Why don't they have them? I mean, I get it. There, there's limitations. But there's limitations because you because the end of the day, they work. They the the problem with with SLA Press Police they're, they're so ego filled, as a as a club they're they're so ego uh, filled in the director's box that it becomes, uh, you know, muscle twirling. It's like oh we're better than them. We want to finish first place. There's no real youth development. There's no real club development. We expect better as Iranian football fans from these two clubs. 
even if it's the limitations that, that they're facing. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it's not good enough. Yeah, I, I agree. And actually, I would expect more from all of our football clubs and especially those two because they're the biggest ones. And uh, I would like to point out that, for example, in France, we have more than two million uh, football license and people having a license you know, at an amateurish level or professional level. And um, in Germany, for example, you have six million. So it's huge. And France, France is only 65 million people. If you compare Iran to a closer country, like for example, uh, the Turkish league, uh, to, to, to Turkey have only less than 3,000 Three hundred thousand, sorry, uh, football license. So, it, it it's nothing compared to eighty five million people living in Turkey. It, it's really nothing. But they have a great league because they're putting money and stuff. But it's not enough for the national team. Yeah. And imagine just Iran. <laughs> we don't. We're not putting a, a lot of money in the league, and uh, we're not working in our academies. So, so. It, like we're not football clubs, as you said, Arya. We don't have football clubs like we have in France or Germany or in in a, in a developed countries in Europe, and that's actually frustrating because I think there is a lot of talent, and um, and Iran is a big country. Football, everyone loves football in Iran. So if if you just organize everything, if you 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 put a a bit more energy in everything, I think it could be one of the main uh, football nation in the world. Here's my thing, right? And, you know, I'm always comparing it to, to where I'm from in Scotland because Scotland, overall, the money within these clubs is not that high. Now, obviously, they are European, they're European, they're, they're, they're part of UEFA, so yes, they get some money, but at the end of the day, they're not very financially rich clubs, most of these Scottish clubs. One of my local teams, Partick Thistle, they run football camps for kids during the fest- festive months, like the, like the summer, like, like Christmas, Easter, October, holidays. They'll run, run camps for kids with the young coaches wearing that uh, uh, Thistle jersey, you know, a T-shirt, something giving to the kids just to give back to the community. When did ever any of these two Tehran clubs do anything for young kids in their city. I've not seen a single bit of youth development, anything, even like a, a no rules camp for kids in Tehran, something. Give back to your fans is what I'm saying. If I'm going to support your club, I bet my bo- bet your bottom, bottom dollar, you have to support me as a fan as well. If you're going to ask for donations from your fans, from an app that you've developed you better be doing things for them as well not just asking for money and then just putting in your pocket and that's it that's the problem with these clubs where is that money going what are you doing with it and if you're not doing anything with it you better be admitting that because because they're not they're not admitting it and the reality of the situation is these clubs are now out of the asian champions league and you know, now these fans have only one thing to support, and that's the PGPL, which, by the way, this season has been absolutely horrendous. From a technical standpoint, the PGPL has been ridiculously bad. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm disappointed in both these clubs not giving back to their communities. Now they're out of the ACL, and they have the nerve to complain about it and try to put it on the backs of the national team and come out and say, oh, if they're not, if, the, if Paris Police and Estelle aren't, aren't going to be in the Asian Champions League, well, Iran shouldn't go to the World Cup either. What are you talking about? Like, end of the day, if Iran, if there's anyone representing Iran at international stage, it's a national team at the World Cup. You guys are not doing it at the Asian Champions League anymore because you're out of it. So, you, you know, basically, in my opinion, they need to be a little bit simmered down in terms of their approach because there's only one team that's going to be re- re- representing Iran at the international stage, and that's at the World Cup. So I'm not, I'm not happy at all with, 
with the fan base and the not not the fan base the 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 you know the lack of support for the fan base and and the the clubs itself. Now let's move on to the Yazda show comments on Carlos Querish. Now, yeah, we we kind of don't really talk about Carlos Querish anymore um, as a show, but yeah, they mentioned it on their show and they made a few comments. So, yeah, I think um, Arya Daniel. I don't know which one of you guys know knows more about this, but uh, let's just cover that off very quickly. No, I mean, look, I mean, ridiculous, ridiculous comments from from Kari Mi, from from Azizi from Moshaba Jabari, just ridiculous, just childish um, playground conversations regarding a situation that occurred, I don't know how many years ago, six, seven Wait, Arya, years explain, ago. Explain what they said. Just Basically, for, just essentially, don't know. The, 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 what was being said is that Karimi was, was, his captaincy was taken away from him and given to Nekunam. Uh, and you know they, they were mentioning that me Jab Body mentioned that you know he, he should have should have accepted it. Uh, Carrie Me was was going on about how you know it was a surprise to him because he's a very experienced player and normally experienced players uh, are always given the preference for captaincy in national teams over maybe less experienced players. Uh, he believed that you know that shouldn't have happened. He also said that Nick Wunar mentioned to him. That he was gonna give his captain's armband, armband back to carry me, and now he's, you know, he's never heard anything about it. You know, Nick Wunam never did that, and he, you know, he's basically accusing Nick Wunam of lying to him, which is a bit ridiculous because end of the day, uh, I'm sorry, but Nick Wunam, I believe, was one of the best captains we've ever had. I believe he was the best, but you know, that's up for debate. Um, and you know, I'm disappointed. Why did you have to sit there for how many, for God knows how long? And also, Andre Timorian was there as well, and just you know slating Nekunam when he was an unbelievable captain for us. You should be talking about how great he was as captain, not about the decision that you're upset about. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just a bit, it's just a bit petty in my opinion. Yeah, actually, I I find it a bit childish too. It's it's crazy that. There are so many good subjects. Like for example, we find always subjects to talk on on our pod, and in their show, they're they're talking about things that doesn't even matter. Like as Arya said, for me too, Javad Nekunam is the best captain we have. He he played six season in uh, six seasons in La Liga with Osasuna. Like we have no player, no player did that actually. There is yeah. Mehti Madavika that played a few years hmm. uh, too in uh, in Bundesliga, in the top league. And uh, Nekunam was always a very good professional, a very good leader. Keros was saying that too. And even at Osasuna, he was a leader too. And uh, I, I don't know how they, they can allow themselves to, to talk about that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what's I, interesting, it's, it's crazy. What's interesting is that he's speaking about it but he doesn't even speak about the fact that Kairos made him his assistant manager for the national team. And he was the guy, Ali Karimi was the guy who walked out on the national team before the World Cup. He walked out on the team. And to this day, look, I mean, okay, you know, okay, you know, managerial career isn't really relatable, but it kind of is relatable from a, a leadership standpoint. Nick Wunam is now a great manager in, in, in Iran. I don't. I don't think Karim had a good had a good uh, coaching career. I mean, for Sepi, Rudy wasn't really doing anything. So, ultimately, I'm I'm baffled as far as I'm concerned. And the great thing is that uh, I, I remember at that time when uh, Karim get back to the national team, he said that yeah, Keros asked us like like about the captaincy, and he said yeah, let uh, let Nekunam be. So. Uh, it should be Nekunam. So I, I don't know why he's talking about that right now. It's Nekunam is, has always been successful with Team Millie. He always gave everything and now he's a successful coach too. So yeah, I don't know. It's, I, <laughs> gonna... it, it, I find it crazy. Okay, nice. So just before we wrap up the episode, let's move to fan questions. We love your fan questions and like love it when you send them in. So yeah, let's move on to fan questions. Arya, what fan questions have we got? 
just first one comes from uh, Erfan on Twitter, ERI1806. He just asks, uh, do you think Scotia should stay for the World Cup? Yeah, I, I, if, if you qualify, I do not see why he would be sacked. I mean, there's been rumours about him getting sacked before the World Cup and then, a, you know, a, 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 a more popular manager coming in. I don't believe those rumours. I just refuse to believe it. It's just impossible. Like, how would that happen? <laughs> like, it's ridiculous, in my opinion, if that could, if that could even be a, a possibility. Yeah, I think even if we could get a world class manager, which I don't think we can do with like the budget that we have, like I don't even then, like how many months would they have to work with the team? Because you know, they're actually with clubs. Like I don't think they'll get that many interactions. So the safer bet is to stick with Skosic, even though like I'm not a huge like the the, the hugest fan of him um, as a manager. I think if if we lost against Lebanon and Tarami was like ousted from the from the squad, he could have been under a lot of scrutiny. He might have got fired anyway. But I would rather stick with him just in terms of like risk. Um, it's more it's more risky to bring in a new manager at that point. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, and the results are in his favor, so so he should stay. Yeah, look, next month's matches. I think uh, obviously if we qualify, uh, you know, against um, Iraq and UAE. You know, I, I just don't see how how those how th- I mean he's pretty much won all the games except one draw against South Korea. I just don't see how that would make any sense to sack him. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, it would just make zero sense. But um, next question uh, comes from uh, CXI at CRHJX. He asks uh, thoughts on. Um, potential uh, logo change for the national team. Uh, uh, there was obviously that AFAM kit uh, logo that got leaked on online by Footy Headlines, and then they deleted it because they realized it wasn't real. It was just a concept uh, logo um, with like a cheetah on it. I didn't like it very much, but uh, I don't know. I mean, the current logo is a little bit generic. It's got a flag and in a, in a, in a football. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a bit generic. Like, I don't know if it's like, like it's not very good. Yeah. But if they change it, I don't want to see like something super. You know, like, like you know, it's like, it's, you know, someone sketched it on their computer. Like, I want it to be proper. I want it to be a real logo. I don't want it just to be like a sketch of like a cheetah's face. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think it's a little bit weird, but yeah. We'll see. I think <laughs> when you're talking about the logo, I was like, do we even have a logo? Because it's just like literally a flag and the football, which in my eyes is not a logo. So like, it's weird. Like we're, we must be one of the only national teams in the world, if not the only one that doesn't have a logo. Um, it, I don't know. It is weird, but it is what it is. I mean, I don't know. Daniel? Well, I agree that our logo is a bit old and um, a, a new one, a, a better one would do good, actually, because, yeah, it's not really a logo. And uh, I agree that uh, a nice, more modern one w- would be great. All right. Next question comes from Ke- Keon uh, Z0. He asks, uh, should Mehdi Abdi be called up from, from Paris Police striker? Um, look, obviously, the, the real question is, do we need a striker, a new striker? I don't know if we need someone new to come in. I think, actually, if anyone new should should come in in that position is Shaab Zahidi. <clears throat> I think he's deserved it for a little while now. But Mehdi Abdi is a good striker, you know, by, by Iranian league standards. He's done really well. Um, I just don't know if he's necessarily good enough to get into this team. You know, I think he's got some things here and there that are, are, are interesting. I just don't know if he's good enough, you know. Uh, next question comes from, final question comes from uh, Kesh Chan, Kesh9974746444. He asks, <clears throat> do you think we can get into part two by the 2026 World Cup if the ranking process stays the same. What? So basically, 
Yeah, so obviously for the next World Cup, for the 2026 yeah. World Cup, he said, you know, can we get the pot two? Uh, because of the rankings, you know, if you keep winning matches, we'll eventually go up the rankings and we'll be able to get the pot two for the draw. It's really thinking far in advance, wow. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's hard, you know, I think pot three is probably more achievable at this point, but pot two, I'm going to say no, but I think it would it could it could potentially be something for me for the 2030 World Cup. <laughs> but, uh, but, we'll see. Right. But, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Like none yeah. of the players will be playing by 2030, you realize. Yeah. Like it'll be a completely new squad. <laughs> yeah, completely new. Maybe Silas Manesh will still be there. Uh, he'll be like, maybe he might be captain, is the only one. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be in his 30s. So, but actually, yeah. we would need to do more friendlies to, yeah, to maintain that, I mean, our, our points, it. too. That's it. Look, Iran, Iran has the potential to go anywhere. Let's be honest. They have the potential to go anywhere. It's, it's, it's if the country's federation, if. They want to to help us, then we can go really far. If the clubs start getting behind us, if the fans of these clubs start getting behind us, if everyone is working um, together collectively, no doubt, no doubt, we can get really far. But not with the current way we're going. It's not good enough. Yeah, completely agree. That's all the fan questions. Well, thank you again to everyone who sent in fan questions. And do follow us on Twitter because for the next podcast, we will do fan questions as always. And we always appreciate them. They're always very nice. So I think we're going to wrap up there. Thank you so much for listening and to Arya and Daniel for joining me. Follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. And yeah, I guess we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks Thanks so much for listening. Cheers. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Saman Godus. I'm playing for the Iranian national team and Brentford Football Club. And you are listening to Golbezan podcast.